Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Dunn with Advocate Integrative Medicine. And today with our staff, we're gonna be talking about credentials. And with us, we have Dr. Matt Riggins, we have Dr. Holly Dockery, and I'm Dr. Tim Dunn. So to start out, we're going to look at what is a doctorate's level of education. Now, we had just spoken prior to being on camera, and what that is, is the highest level that you can achieve or mastery in your select field. So for instance, Dr. Matt, yes. your background is as a medical doctor. That is correct. And in order to, to achieve the degree of medical doctor, I had to complete uh, four years from an accredited institution, at the end of which I was awarded the degree of doctor of medicine. And then from there you did your residency, that is correct. From there, uh, in many states you then have to perform a residency uh, to further specialize, be it family medicine, be it internal medicine, be it surgery, uh, and that field of study varies from each uh, person to another and what they decide to go into. So that's why we have specialties. That is why you have specialties. Makes first. sense, doesn't it? Okay, so that's medicine. We have many different fields. Residencies vary from, and please please correct me, three years to seven? They can be a minimum of three years. However, there are some fields in which it requires seven to ten years. The more specialized fields, for example, cardiac surgery or somebody that wishes to specialize in neurosurgery. There are many, many programs that require more than just three years. More advanced. More advanced, okay. yes. So for your field, this is the field that everyone is accustomed to when we say, I'm a primary care doctor. I'm a medical doctor, an MD, or a DO. So, let's dive into the things that folks may not know. This is Dr. Holly Dockery, and now we're gonna hear about her side of the educational spectrum. Yeah, so I have a doctor of nursing practice degree and so that differs from a doctor of philosophy, a PhD, which you can also obtain in nursing. Both are considered terminal degrees in nursing is the highest level of education you can obtain. But in nursing, the difference is it's focused on clinical practice. So I went through my educational program, completed at minimum 1,000 hours of um, clinical hours supervised um, before taking my national boards and getting awarded a certificate to practice by the state of Tennessee. So be more specific as to your credentials. So because here we refer to her as Dr. Holly because her degree says doctor. Correct. Yeah. So my degree is doctor of nursing practice. So like I said, that's a terminal degree in clinical nursing. Um, and my certification is as a nurse practitioner, but the degree is a doctor of nursing practice. And then your specialty. So my specialty is an adult geriatric primary care nurse practitioner. I'm board certified. Um, it's a little bit of a mouthful, but basically I'm certified to uh, treat and care for anyone aged 12 and older. So hopefully folks, we're trying to clear up the muddy waters as far as when we shoot videos of Dr. Holly that she's not an MD or a DO, and she's not. But we're very clear about that, folks, and we're very clear about what her credentials are and where she's coming from. Myself, I hold a degree as a doctor of chiropractic. So again, we went through an accredited school. We did four years of chiropractic school. On top of that, I did postgraduate work in sports and what we call PM&R, or functional medicine and rehab. And in the spring, I'll be sitting for my boards in functional medicine and rehab, otherwise known as a physiatrist. So again, I am called a doctor because I have a terminal degree in my chosen field. Just as Dr. Holly spoke of, a terminal degree may be a PhD. A terminal degree may be as a nurse, a chiropractor, a medical doctor. So in the educational arenas, there's many terminal degrees, and they're all called doctorates. That's great. That is correct. But in medicine, we're starting to see that there's many different types of terminal degrees. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in our particular office here at Advocate Integrative Medicine, we all work together in a team approach. If there's things that we need to discuss between us, we're here. We're within a text away. 
Dr. Matt is very good about when we call him, text him, and gets, gets right back with us. We have oversight not only in our x-ray department of radiology, but we also have oversight in cardiology when we do our EKGs. So we are constantly raising the bar as to how we take care of you. We all have terminal degrees, but we're also consistently seeking out the highest terminal degree in whatever testing that's being done here. Anything you'd like to add in closing, folks? I think you've covered it very well into clearing up that anybody that wishes to pursue to be called a doctor, there are very many ways which they can achieve that in their chosen field of study. We have chosen healthcare, specifically medicine, nursing, chiropractic. The same as veterinarian, mm -hmm. which you're very familiar with. Yes. Dentistry. So there's many different subgroups. Hopefully this helps folks. If you have any questions or concern, please call the office and let us help you understand the changing faces of healthcare.